Hi, this video is about one guy's assembly of a purple leaf gazebo, 12 by 20. I did it all by myself. It might not be the way you would do it, might not be the best way. It's just the way I ended up doing it, and it kind of worked. So there you have it, one guy's uh, slideshow. So we have unboxing, some stuff we did on the ground in the driveway, and then the posts and beams, and then the ridge rafters and then go on to add the screens around the top because it's a double roof thing and then some more support roof support beams then tying it down and then finally putting on the panels so we'll start off with just getting the delivery and uh, it came as five boxes 550 pounds and it came on a, a less than truckload shipment thing so there are the five boxes and uh, you can just count them up here. Those last two were um, the roof panels. And if you wanted to like any details, you could slow that down and look at it. Well, not much damage, but there was something sticking through. And the box is open like this. So you don't have to dump it out. Or it opens. You can actually use the box top to kind of transfer stuff around. No instructions in the first box, so uh, we can get the second box looking for instructions. And there's nothing on the outside of the box telling you how to open it or where the instructions are, but in the second box, there was the instruction manual. So I went inside and took a quick look at this, and there are lots and lots and lots of parts. And so I decided I wasn't going to try to count up all these parts and check them off and make sure they were all there. I just I just started unpacking them and laying them out so that when I needed them, I could, you know, kind of go into the garage and find them. So, this is only some of the stuff. Still got another box and all the roof panels, but we got the posts and the, and the beams. And most, some of the beams and the posts. And just a lot of stuff that, at this point, I don't know what it is. Uh, now that I've put it together, I'm narrating this after the fact, so uh, I do know what all this, where all this stuff goes uh, in the scheme, of, grand scheme of things. But yeah, lots and lots of parts. Very intimidating, actually, to open this thing. I'm not showing the roof panels or this last box. So here's some pre-assembly that I did in the driveway beforehand. The posts and the beams. And I drilled a hole in the bottom of this, or the top of this, and the bottom of this, so that I could put a conduit through there for electricity. There were some bent pieces that I had to work through. There's a, a steel thing that goes in between these aluminum pieces, and that was bent. Uh, tried to get it in there. I managed to get it in there, and finally, with a piece of wood, I smacked it and got it kind of straightened out. There was another bent piece I chipped paint on, kind of straightened out, but all that was apparently shipping damage. So... Um, but I got them kind of together, and I got them um, kind of straightened out. I decided to throw these, um, these bolts into a bin so that I had easy access to them. There were a lot of things that need to be bolted in. And this is going into the steel piece that's connecting the two aluminum pieces and uh, getting those just loosely started. And then there's these tracks. This is what the screens ride on, so you got to put in a whole bunch of bolts into the tracks got uh, got all those done now and um this is where the, this is the place where the posts go and this is where you put the uh, screens in so i've got the screen tracks in there and here are the ends and the places where the posts go and the and the uh, where the the uh, rafters go so here's an end so um in order to tighten all these bolts, I decided that I wasn't going to do them by hand with this little Allen wrench. And I decided that I'd just cut it off and use the piece. And uh, I, I quit doing that. I got my angle grinder out and, and really cut it really quick. But that video didn't work. So anyway, I got it in my, uh, elect my cordless drill. And then I s tried to decide what... Um, um, clutch setting I should set because the aluminum is pretty soft. Um, these holes lined up pretty good. Other police places didn't line up so good. But here I'm tightening down the uh, 
the connecting piece um, for the for the beam. And notice I've got the flange thing on there that holds the roof panels. I've just got those loosely on there. And so I think I'm going to go a little tighter on the uh, clutch setting. I did a little experimentation just with feeling feeling how these how tight these were. But I just went right down the line and it was pretty pretty, uh, pretty quick to get those uh, screw, uh, tightened. Screwing them in wasn't so easy. But. And then I wanted to just check the play on some of these things. The play was non, you know, wasn't, wasn't at all. Um, there was no play and some of them there was play. So I didn't know exactly where to tighten these down. So next we're going to move on to the posts and beams. And we've got them all laid out, ready to go. Um, some of those deck boards they were delayed because they were damaged. But otherwise, I've got my composite deck that I'm going to build this on. And got them all, I've got all the beams and posts laid out. And this is kind of how it goes together. Um, got to figure out a way to do this without uh, having a lot of help. So I bungeed the uh, posts and I measured between these things and turns out that that's this distance between the posts. And so I can rest it on a screw, which I'm going to show you shortly. And then on the other side, I can, uh, I can just get some screws into it. So it was, it was a little bit treacherous because the, the beam could have could have come loose on the other side because it's just resting on a screw over there. But I got the screws in this side and then I went back and got the screws in the other side. So you can do it if you've got some way to support those posts. So here we can just quick show you the screws in there, just those two loosely. But it ain't going anywhere now. So here's here's what I have on the in the middle posts and all that basically I use this technique all along. Just put the screws in there on the top hole and then slide it down over the the post and it uh, yeah so it's sitting there sitting on those two screws and you can just undo the screws lower it down tighten them in there in the holes so just balancing it's kind of everything together and to make sure I've got the um, this, the uh, posts in the right place I measured on the diagonal and made sure that that was equal so that I didn't have a skewed um, rectangle and then you put these um, these braces up and I had everything loose at this point just just finger tight and then I went back and I tightened those earlier ones and so on the corners we've got these like um, this is what gathers the the water and it comes out that little hole down there I think that's going to be clogged but you know it's what we got so that's that So next we go on to putting on the ridge and the rafters. And this is kind of the technique they want you to do, sort of on the opposite corners. And I have to balance the ridge. So I have a ladder and I did some measurement and it's about 10 feet off the ground roughly, I guess. And so I got a ladder and a box and a bunch of crap up there just to make it the right height for the um, assembly. So kind of a little bit wobbly so I put this um, just tape this stick onto the ladder and uh, I I just hook the uh, hook the ridge uh, on the corner there and uh, just set it on top of that and um, got it kind of positioned and it was pretty wobbly and I was kind of afraid that things were gonna fall but it wasn't quite positioned right, so I had to move the ladder, just gently pull the ladder a little bit, get it so that the, the um, bolt holes would be roughly lining up, which I, which I did. Got it kind of just precariously balanced there. And um, got a nut in it here and there, or I mean a bolt in it here and there. And uh, this, this one is on the other corner. And... Uh, Got that one uh, just just balanced on there right now, but you know I'd climb up there and put a bolt in it, and uh, kept on um, adding 
rafters and worked okay. It was, it was, it would be easier if I had help, but uh, I didn't have any help. So uh, this is kind of the wobbly way. It's just the bolts are all in there, but they're just not tightened down, so it's kind of wobbly. But it's no longer no longer needs support of a ladder. So then I started adding these other um, these other uh, be, uh, rafters. Um, I'm just balancing them up there and putting the bolts in there and pretty soon I had everything everything connected so uh, yeah you can do it by yourself um, I wouldn't recommend it actually I would I would recommend just having a party and having like tons of people to hold part you know hold parts for you but but uh, I did it myself got them all all in there then I checked square again and uh, wrote it down because I'm gonna, you know, when I anchor it down, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna use those measurements again. So there we have it. Uh, got the uh, kind of got got the hard part done, I think. Actually, it's not quite the hard part though. So next we go into the screens and the top roof. Now the P's and Q's are a track that holds the lower roof panels and also holds the screens. So that was the next thing to go in. And they're kind of wonky. You have to bend them to get them in there. And uh, they go on at kind of an angle. And it took me a while to kind of figure out if this was right or not, but the screens seem to kind of lay in there. So once the roof panels are on, that will block that thing, that uh, gap. So these aren't too difficult to install except for they didn't fit you know if you look at this like this was significantly <laughs> uh, long longer than it should have been I mean I could force it in there but I and I had to force it in there but uh, it seemed to be a little bit uh, off and then you have to undo one to get the screens once you get the screens on there I tried to pull to see if I could you know get the rafter to uh, to um, be in the right place but it, it just seemed to be the holes weren't lined up and then I forgot to put on these um, there's four of these so I had to take it apart and uh, I wasn't exactly sure how this went but uh, it doesn't go under there so it goes over it and looks a lot better there so that's how that goes the instructions aren't super clear but you know there's the things aren't lining up very well at this point the screens are kind of popping out and uh, the holes just weren't uh, in the right place and then there's these brackets that go on the outside and putting these things up is you know not not too difficult they you know they although the holes aren't right you can you know it's nothing like the big post and beams where something fell it would really <laughs> really go these these are just light little pieces, and they're they they they're the track that the bottom of the um, top roof panels go into, and you just leave them really loose, and then you can put the roof panels in and then tighten them down. So you just pop them in, pop in the roof panels with that thing loose, and then and then tighten up that that uh, rail. There's no screws in the top, so we're on to the next. Thing. Next, we go for the roof support beams. These are kind of beefier beams. And I put them up in, try, I was going to put them up in four pieces, but really you just put, you can put them up one or two at a time. They're beefier beams than these other ones. And there were some bent ones that I had to deal with. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they go up and you can just leave them loose, a little bit loose so that you can slide them around a little bit. There was one questionable thing here. Uh, if you look at the top one versus the bottom one, I needed to figure out which way that was. And it was the uniform. It was the one where it's even, evenly spaced. Um, so here's here's my first attempt. But actually, I took them apart to put them up there. And yeah, you just put them up there. They go up pretty easy, and you kind of leave them loose so that the the uh, roof panels can you can have a little bit of play in the roof panels, which you're going to need. So next we go to the tie downs. I used lag screws to put it uh, directly into the. Uh, framing material underneath the deck and I wanted to get these uh, positioned properly so I did another diagonal measurement and made sure that was good and I also 
put the conduit in there. Um, so I started out with those video when you saw that I drilled these holes. They weren't in there anyway. And so I just shoved this conduit down there. And then once it was down there, I had to uh, fish it out. And uh, I managed to get it through there after a long time of fishing. Managed to get it through the hole. And I don't show it, but uh, I actually got it drilled through and put into the house. So it's ready to go to put the ceiling fans up. So now we're onto the roof panels. And this was the hardest thing uh, because the things didn't, the holes just didn't line up mostly. So the, they came packaged well and um, they weren't bent or anything like that. And there's a lot of different labels on them, a lot of different numbers, but that was fine. The instructions kind of tell you where you need, where they all need to go. And then there were these, these Z things which you have to add to every panel that's, at a, that's cut at an angle because they're painted shut. So each one, you have to click and break, a, break the paint, which took quite a while, but I did it indoors. And I, while, you know, I added these to the, to the, to the roofing panels um, and then made kind of kits out of them so that they were in the order that I needed, uh, needed them. I'm showing this one that I'm doing outside, but basically I did them all in the, in the air conditioning. And um, it was tedious, but, uh, but there, that's what you need to do. So this is an example of how you can put the rubber grommet thing um, into the hole with the other hand and then shove your bolt through there. So you don't need to prepare the grommet before um, you know, before you put the panel up, just slide it in there. Except for there is a case where the, this doesn't work. And everything was at an angle. The, the, this, you know, this seems like everything was all uh, uh, kind of off and difficult to get through. And because I was up against the house, I couldn't get my hand around there or get a ladder. So I actually rested the drill, just the weight of the drill, and then I just, I just tightened it on with their little screw. And this is the case where you need to actually prepare the grommet beforehand. Um, I just taped it on there. Those four bars are the only places you need to bother with it um, doing this uh, because you just can't slip the grommet in. It said, like that, the instructions say, oh, slip, slip S in there. You can't. <laughs> it's impossible. But I just taped them on there. And then when I put the roof panel on there, um, they, they're kind of hidden under there. But you can see that... Uh, you put that first roof panel on, then you put the over overlapping roof panel on there, and then you can see that the grommet uh, is, is ready to go, and you can show it. And most of these have a nut on the other side, but there are four, exactly four in the whole thing, that have a, um, a tapped um, hole that you go into. And so sometimes I would put the bolt through to hold the panel from slipping down because otherwise it would slide down by gravity. So this, so I put the bolt through and just to hold the panel from slipping. And then afterwards I come back and I slip the grommet in there and then put the bolt back through. And it's just, it just made it so that uh, the panel didn't slip down while you were, while you were working on some of the other nuts from the other, or the, getting some of the other bolts threaded through there. So the panels went up pretty quickly. Now, some of these weren't machined very good, and they left this, this uh, blockage. And believe it or not, that even though it was pretty easy to remove just by poking it with a, with a bolt, um, it did cause the bolts not to thread very well. And so and this, this is my other technique for, for tightening up these last few, just the very last few on the end. Um, I just had to feel and get the... the uh, bit into the bolt head and, uh, and then hit, grab the other side with my fingers and, and, and hit, the, uh, hit the button on the drill to tighten it up. So yeah, I just held the nut with my fingers. I never really needed to do anything more than that. It's just a little bit of hold back and then it'll catch and, and um, uh, tighten. So there you have it. Uh, all the roof panels on there. Everything is there. It's all tied down. I still haven't got the ceiling fans in there or the screens. I, I just skipped the screens for this video because I just, I'm 
you know, wasn't going to go there uh, yet with that anyway. So there you have it. Um, a uh, 12 by 20 gazebo built on a 12 foot wide deck. And so there's leftover Zs. I don't know why, but tons of them. And leftover parts. They let you drop a few. Uh, I did drop a few. But um, started out with a whole lot of parts. And uh, I didn't know how it was going to go together. And it actually went together pretty, pretty quickly and pretty, you know, pretty straightforward. I mean, it wasn't easy, but, um, but I got her done. Hope it helps.